started my uh, football um, for the very early days, the early, I suppose it would have been mid to late 60s, at the Eastern Colts Football uh, League. Um, played a year or two there, um, enjoyed myself, and then uh, Mum and I moved out to Norlane, um, and then started a, a little league out there and played under one of the other great West uh, Doyen players, uh, Dizzy Lynch, his, uh, his dad, Alan, Alan Lynch Senior. Played uh, three years under him and uh, pretty much learned a lot of things, football-wise uh, and other things. Got a few clips in the year off. I've been, I've been a bit of a dag, but uh, um, uh, Alan Lynch Senior was a, a, a policeman and probably uh, uh, a fairly hard, hard-nosed uh, sergeant at that. He um, he had three very uh, distinct um, things he used to pump into all the kids, and that was. Uh, determination, discipline and dedication, which at, as, at, uh, at my age at that point probably never had too much of any of them other than determination. Um, but uh, did learn a lot of, lot of, lot of things from uh, Alan Lynch Senior and uh, then progressed on uh, through the under-18s under John Bly, who was a terrific uh, footballing mentor of uh, young men. I think his main role at the club was to turn young men, in, sorry, young men into men and uh, um, whilst he wasn't that gifted as a, as a skills coach, Johnny uh, had all the uh, other repertoire to, to help with um, the ability to, to mould people and, and turn uh, individuals into teams. Uh, I left North Shore in 1980 after being uh, in a fairly successful era. I think most local people would know that the North Shore Football Club was a, was a, a great place to be from the, uh, probably certainly from the early 70s through to probably the late 90s. Had lots of um, premierships and runners, runners up in different uh, different divisions. Um, it was great to be a part of. Learn a lot of things. Learn how to uh, learn how pretty much to play footy and be a man um, uh, because you were you were uh, coached and taken along by other men that I looked up to. I suppose uh, I was a little bit sad that uh, some of my good friends from North Shore didn't didn't actually want to leave uh, North Shore. And, maybe try their hand at uh, something, at something higher, like a VFA. Um, certainly half a dozen I can think of off the top, the top of my head uh, would have been great players in, in the VFA standard because of the, uh, the open nature of the game and the, uh, the quickness and they had all the skills around the place that, that would have been uh, absolutely ideal. But I suppose that can be said of a lot of footy clubs, but uh, um, certainly um, North Shore had plenty of great players at that uh, particular time. Um, I went to uh, Geelong in uh, 81 and did a pre-season um, with uh, the likes of Mal Eddy and Lee Crichton, who uh, also progressed to the uh, to the club at some point in time during, throughout that year. Um, didn't make it, got to the last two and uh, Billy Goggin was coaching at the time and uh, uh, it was the last Sunday before, I believe, the first match and um, I, I thought I was on the list and uh, thought I'd done enough. And after doing uh, 20 hundreds and 15 two hundreds and, and about, about half a dozen four hundreds in about 23 degree heat, I thought I'd done enough. But uh, Billy patted us on the back and said, I'm sorry, boys, uh, to me and Lee. Um, not enough room. You, you, uh, you didn't make it. So, uh, of course, after putting in a big effort, as you do, um, when you go up to that uh, highest level, um, it was a bit of a downer for me, but he pulled me aside and had a, had a good yarn with me and, and said, look, he, he didn't think I was too far away, but it wasn't quite enough. And I accepted that, but he did suggest and put the seed into my mind that uh, maybe I should try to go and, and, and have a run at West because of uh, his background at the club. He thought that I'd be, I'd be well suited to, to that. So I went away and was disappointed for two or three weeks, of course, got over that. And um, there was an overture made in my direction to come to West and uh, through the, uh, all the time before I was actually at the club, um, I was a lover of uh, VFA football, um, as I suppose were a lot of other the local boys. I um, used to look forward to the Sunday uh, training at North Shore. We'd uh, kick the footy, get a bit of kick the kick and muck around and then uh, we'd go to Heinz's place and Gordon Heinz's place and have a uh, Sunday barbecue. And, and then we'd all head across here to uh, watch West play because it was um, pretty much at that time, I think, West was on a par with Geelong. Uh, they were getting success, so a great side. And um, certainly, uh, um, you know, the likes of Gilmore and, and uh, Rex Deeth and Johnny Friend, Joe Rodojevic, uh, Alan Lynch, you know, uh, 
Johnny Scarlett and Brody both played in both levels. Those sorts of guys were, uh, were terrific footballers, um, someone to look up to. Um, and you'd, you'd walk into the, the front gate and there'd be the New Dan boys up on the, on the right hand side uh, point post and then you'd go down a bit and it'd be the Barwon boys. The St Mary's boys would be over here, then there'd be the St Peter's boys and then we'd come down one end with uh, some of the other clubs and it was just a, a, a great day. Um, have, a, have a few beers, watch West uh, you know, play well and uh, it was, was nothing to watch watch uh, a 50 goal game where um, uh, West may not actually win or if they did win it might have been a 27 goal to 26 or 25 goal game which was absolutely unheard of nowadays um, but it was talent, it was real entertainment, it was uh, as I say uh, it, it was a bit of um, bit of biff which a lot of people uh, enjoyed, um, a lot of people nowadays you, know, you lose your house for a bit of biff but um, it was, uh, it was something I enjoyed uh, to get, get a part of and be, um, I suppose, uh, my time at the, at the club here, I looked upon it as uh, I wasn't the most talented, I wasn't the fastest, I certain wasn't, certainly wasn't the most athletic, but um, there are other things I could do that could help and uh, some leadership and, and a little bit of uh, physicality um, to help with, it, with the smaller, more, more uh, talented fellas. Uh, so you sort of find your own way in that regard. Reasonably big body, played mostly in the ruck um, on the odd occasion, centre half back, centre half forward. Had no real talent um, to talk of. Wasn't a great mark, I certainly couldn't kick over a jam tin. Wasn't a bad handball, it didn't help much if you if they put you down close to the goals, unless of course you had what little blokes running past you. Um, I reckon I probably provided uh, Mal Eddy with about 180 goals of his career, um, but that's because he knew where to get hit the right spot and, uh, and he was a better kick at the goals than I was so I didn't mind giving it to him but uh, like a utility style player, um, slow, Rex Hunt actually once said to me, um, not to me sorry, on the, on, the, uh, on the tally in the Preston Grand Final that uh, I was slower than a snail on the Mordialic Pier so that pretty much I suppose covers it. Um, uh, yeah, limited but I, I had other uh, other attributes to my game that, that could be part of the team, uh, the team uh, goal, I suppose. Um, yeah, to say that I uh, threw my weight around a bit, I did. Uh, but I always felt I did it in the right manner. It was hard, but, but reasonably fair. The coaching panel sort of had a, had a certain appreciation of what you could do and how you could do it, as long as it was sensible and it wasn't silly. Um, um, and, and you sort of got away with a little bit, and I suppose people appreciated that effort. Um, whether it was you know, running an extra 20 yards to go and shepherd somebody to make a clear passage as opposed to taking a mark or kicking a long goal. A lot of country boys, new influx of people every, uh, every year, so there wasn't that the same oldness about some clubs where you get clicks and uh, people aren't comfortable because oh, Johnny's wife said this about me, that our car's not as shiny as their car or whatever it might be. Everyone really got along well. Um, the long trips from Frankston and Sandringham and uh, Danny Nong, they were a half a dozen stubby trips. Um, you, could, uh, you could learn a lot about a person um, in an hour and a half on a bus, trust me. And uh, with all the, um, with all the, the new uh, country boys, they were all characters. Um, we had a, had a rule where on the bus on the way home you had to sing, sing or show us your thing. Of course, no one wanted to see your thing, so uh, you had to sing a song or tell some jokes. So, uh, of course, there was one or two come to mind. Um, uh, Roger Cantwell, um, he's, he's a local, he's not a country boy, but uh, he's a very funny man. Uh, he was fantastic on the bus. Um, Peter Woodard from Violet Town. Um, Pete was um, just one of those country boys that you had to like. He just want, had that thing about him where, he was cheeky and all the rest of it, but he was just a great fellow to be around. I believe now he, uh, he runs one of the biggest horse studs in Australia, so he's done nicely for himself and good on him. Um, uh, uh, Richo, I can't remember Richo's name, Howdy Doody, um, Kim Richardson, another country boy that you couldn't get the, the microphone off. He uh, was just one of those guys that had a million stories. Most of them, most of them put you to sleep, but uh, every now and then he had a, had a good one, so it kept you, kept you going. So, yeah, all my memories of the, uh, the West Footy Club, uh, those days are all, uh, are all gold to me. Um, I, uh, I, I, um, 
I wish I could have uh, played in the 83 grand final side instead of the runners-up. I think we were a bit stiff. Um, we, uh, I think we got beaten by 10 goals in the, in the second semi by Preston, so we were really handed uh, a decent old shellac, and um, Darkie did a good job to get us ready for, for the grand final. We just fell a little bit short. I think we missed a couple from probably five or 10 out straight in front. It might have made the difference, but uh, all in all, um, the talent that we had compared to the talent they had, I think we got a lot more out of our people than they did of theirs. Um, congratulations to them, of course, for winning it. But uh, uh, Johnny Burke, I remember um, coming home, uh, walking, me and Welshy, Paul Welsh, walking out of the, uh, the Junction Oval rooms to get on the bus, and Johnny Burke's sticking out, uh, sticking his head out the side of the bus, giving it to us, and um, of course, Paul and I didn't take it all that well. We wanted to, to go and um, reintroduce ourselves to John on the bus, but uh, the Preston boys wouldn't let him come out, obviously. And of course, we now know three or four years later, he uh, pushed the umpire over, uh, over and jumped the fence and smashed someone in the, uh, in the crowd and got 10 years for life. So it's amazing how things turn, but uh, it's probably a little bit of karma there. Um, but now, all in all, uh, um, great footy club, fantastic memories. Um, Great talent come through the club. Uh, just one other little little thing that sort of pricks my mind was that um, I can remember being here one day, I think it was 82, against Preston. We had oh, close to 11,000 people in the crowd. And I remember that Saturday, Geelong had played um, Hawthorne and Rod Hosman was coaching. It was a shit day. The day, uh, the day we played was a very good day, I've got to say. But I think they only had about 8,000 people turn up to the Geelong game. So it just sort of shows you it was it was well uh, catered for. Um, people love their VFO footy, and uh, and to be a part of that, um, you know, it's just something you don't forget, and you uh, appreciate uh, that along with all the friendships and the, uh, the good mates. Um, the other thing was the social atmosphere of the football club. Uh, um, I've got to mention my wife. She uh, she was the uh, she was the social uh, on the social committee, if not the vice president. Um, she loved going to the, the bus trips, and uh, as all the wives did, um, often uh, we'd, we'd be coming home and uh, we'd go past them. And of course, we couldn't help but give them a moon, or they'd give us a moon back, or, or do something silly. But uh, they were having as much fun as we were. So all those things helped for a healthy footy club. Um, and uh, uh, the reason I, I, I left West was was simply because uh, um, the, the, the travel, the Sundays. A bit hard um, because I did enjoy the Sunday night trip home, and then you often stayed here till nine or ten or eleven. Before you know it, you you know you have to get up to go to work. That, that becomes a bit hard after a while. So as much as I love the actual game and the atmosphere and the and the exercise of it, it just got a bit hard after a while. So uh, I decided to go to the Snorbles Football Club and played there for um, for five or six years and coached for a couple of years, chairman of selectors and managed to play in two premierships as, a, as the captain of the club. And, and as I say, I'll look back on my time at West and uh, it's all good. You've given your heart to get here and your soul to get it right. You can take them boots and all, oh, but it's sure gonna take a fight. When you spend all week getting to your peak, you're gonna have your say. You bet. On Sunday, it's the BFA. It's Sunday, you're gonna make your play for the BFA. Today, you're gonna fly. It's Sunday for the BFA. It's Sunday.